Today I'm going to show you how you can power your home with a small portable generator just like this one. So this is the Honda EU2200i generator. And as you can see it has a continuous running wattage rating of 1800 watts and a maximum wattage rating of 2200 watts. And for most people, if you just want to keep your refrigerator running and keep some lights on during a power outage, this and the transfer panel that I'm going to show you inside is all you're going to need. And before buying a generator, take some time to think about what you want to power during a power outage. Then add up all your running wattage requirements and make sure it's well below the running wattage rating of the generator. You'll also want to think about the starting watt requirements of things like your refrigerator and freezer, which can be two to three times the normal running wattage requirements. More on how to do that later. And this is my transfer panel. And the cool thing about it is that it works on 120 volts, which is exactly what my generator puts out. So we got the normal breaker box down below and the transfer panel was installed just above it. And as you can see, it's got four circuits. So it can run four circuits in my home. And I originally got this to go with my Goal Zero portable power station. But the cool thing about it is not only can I use it with that, but it also works with our small gas generator. And with these four circuits during a power outage, I can power my refrigerator, my stand-up freezer, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, and the living room, which also includes our Wi-Fi router. And for us, this is plenty enough to get us through a power outage. Now it's not gonna be running my hot water heater. It's not gonna run the dishwasher, the washer and dryer, the stove, the microwave, or the air conditioner. It's not gonna be running those things. But we can live without these things during a temporary power outage. For backup heat during winter time, if the power goes out, we have these uh, Mr. Heater Big Buddy heaters that we can use. And during the summer, uh, with this setup, we can run fans inside the house to help keep cool. So right now, all of these are in the down position in line, which means it's running off of street power. And if you switch it up to the middle position, uh, that will turn the circuit off, and then all the way up will enable it to be powered by the generator. So to simulate a power outage, I'm gonna go ahead and turn all these switches to the off position and that will cut the power probably just heard the freezer go off that'll cut the power to these four circuits and you can see the freezer's off there's no light there and the refrigerator's off as well and you need a heavy duty extension cord that's rated to handle what the generator puts out and as you can see this one is rated for 15 amps 125 volts and that's what the generator requires this is 120 volt 15 amps so definitely make sure you get a heavy duty extension cord so now let's get this thing started up and get power to the house so now that the generator is going all we need to do is plug in the extension cord Now we can go inside. So now all we need to do is take our plug and plug it right into the transfer panel. Make sure that's in there good. And then all we have to do, these are off, all we have to do now is just switch them up to generator power. It's really that easy. And now all four of these circuits are running off the generator. You can see now my freezer has power from the generator. And also the refrigerator now has power from the generator. And as far as the cord management, you know, here's my cord and it just runs on the floor through the kitchen and then it goes outside of our sliding glass door. And then I got the generator way over there with the exhaust uh, pointing out towards the yard. So that's our setup. So now all four of these circuits are running off the generator power. And when the street power comes back on, all we have to do is just come to these switches and flip 
each one of them back down to the line position to put it back on street power. Unplug the cord, turn the generator off, and that's it. It's really that easy. So I highly recommend this setup with a small portable generator. And for most people, this is going to be the simplest way to make sure you can keep some power to your home during a power outage. For the transfer panel, any licensed electrician should be able to install this for you. And we have somebody in our family that was able to install it for us. So I'm not exactly sure how much it would cost if you had to hire somebody. Um, but I'm sure it would vary depending on where you live. If you're interested in getting a, a generator and a transfer panel like I have, be sure to check out the links down in the description. I'll leave some links down there for you. And if this video was helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And to see how I calculated my running wattage and starting wattage requirements, click on this video right here and I'll show you exactly how I did it.